Hey everyone, today we're gonna talk about a very cheerful element. As you can see from the title, it's sulfur. And I never really knew how sulfur looked like, so I googled the picture and I thought I would share it with you guys. So, sulfur, as you can see, it's a very yellow colored solid crystalline structure it has a crystalline structure and sulfur is usually found in the periodic table it's number 16 and it has an atomic mass of 32.066 sulfur was first discovered by the chinese people in around 2000 bce so it's a while back and it was officially discovered by a french chemist called antonois levoisier i know i didn't pronounce it perfectly because I'm not French educated but if you're interested in him just google his name okay so let's take a look at these three different pictures well I don't know the do I don't know if you guys can guess what's the common thing between them but let's take a look okay the first picture right here is a picture of fireworks and fireworks contain gunpowder and gunpowder contains sulfur and sulfur is responsible for this bright red color although sulfur is a yellow is yellow, yellow colored in nature but when it ignites in air it causes this red color okay let's take a look at the second picture which is a picture of medicine well nobody likes taking meds but if you're experiencing any acne problems, your acne meds would contain sulfur as it aids in the process of healing your acne. Also, if you're experiencing any coughing or bronchitis, God forbid that, but your meds would contain sulfur. Okay, the third picture is a picture of some matches and matches also contain gunpowder. And as we learned, gunpowder contains sulfur. Okay, in addition to all of these, you know those lovely trees and plants and flowers? Well, farmers put some fertilizers in the soil in order to aid the growing process of the plants. Lizers, okay. And fertilizers contain sulfur. Because sulfur has an antifungus property that kills fungus in the soil to maintain a healthy soil and plants and all that. So these are the different uses of sulfur in everyday life. Okay. Now let's take a look at some of the chemical uses of sulfur. Well, one of the main chemical uses is production of sulfuric acid which has the formula of H2SO4 okay and sulfuric acid is very harmful to the skin and clothes it can cause burning and I'm sure your lab instructor told you not to get it anywhere on your skin or your hands because it can cause burning let's take a look at this picture right here it's a picture of someone dropping some sulfuric acid on a cotton cloth and it causes burning so you can see the harmful effect of sulfuric acid. Now, let's move on to some of the chemical properties of sulfur. Well, the first property we're going to look at is that sulfur is a non-metal. And it's found as solid in normal conditions, which is 25 degrees Celsius and 1 atmospheric pressure. It's also non-reactive at these conditions okay but sulfur can react under other conditions and it can react with both metals and non-metals with both metals and non-metals let's take an example well Magnesium solid, which is a group 2 metal, reacts with sulfur solid to give magnesium sulfide. Also, sulfur reacts with oxygen gas to give us sulfur dioxide. And sulfur dioxide is the gas responsible for acid rain. And now we're going to talk about acid rain more because it's very important 
Well, when sulfur dioxide gas reacts with the, it, with the rain, okay, which contains obviously water, okay, it, it produces an acid, and this acid can dissolve any marble statue, okay? That's why statues across Europe have experienced a lot of acid rain, and that's why they're withering and a lot of pieces have fallen out. So, acid rain causes marble buildings to break down, and also it causes corrosion, okay? So, let's take another property. Since sulfur can react with oxygen to produce sulfur dioxide gas, sulfur dioxide gas is a colorless gas and it has the smell of rotten eggs. I know it's disgusting, but it's sulfur. Anyway, and it's extremely poisonous. That's why it aids in the production of acid rain. Okay. So, let's take another property, which is making acids such as the one we talked about, sulfuric acid, and also the acid responsible for acid rain. Okay, and also many other acids, but we're not going to get into details of these. So, these are some of the chemical properties of sulfur. And in the next videos, we're going to talk about sulfur more and get into the details of all these properties. So, stay tuned and thanks for watching.